Chuck, I got an obscure one for oh, you. Oh, good. Okay, we're going to talk about harmonic motion. Oh, that's oh, I like that. That's when the planets line up. <laughs> that is so not and, where that happens. Uh, <laughs> right? Yeah. That was a harmonic convergence. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, confusing yeah, yeah. that, right. which is was another non-event in the universe. <laughs> So <laughs> you are what a, you are a killjoy. No, I have good stuff to talk about, not okay. fake stuff. Okay, all, all right. right, I'll accept that. All right. So, as you know, most forces, perhaps all forces you've ever encountered, as you go to a higher distance, it gets weaker. Okay. Yeah, like gravity sense. gets weaker. It makes right. complete it sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. And it's true with electricity and magnetism. Right. The electric charges. Yes. And you can do formulas that describe how the force drops off. It turns out to be a one over r squared. Force. The R is the radius, or distance squared, when it's gravity and electromagnetism. So in other words, if you triple the distance, it's three, one over three is one third, square that, you get one ninth, okay? So okay. That's, what, that's what one over R squared means. All right. So it's four times the distance is one sixteenth. Okay. Five times the distance, one twenty-fifth of what it was. Right. So it drops off. And so there are things that happen in our lives that represent this fact. Most of our life experience is embedded in forces that drop off. Mm, if you're married for 50 years, then, you know, you're probably 50 times less attracted to that person. <laughs> There'll be a linear relationship. Yes, it with would. <laughs> Notice Otherwise, I did not use the R squared. R squared. Because that would mean you hate them. So, there exist forces that get stronger at greater distance. Ooh. And there's a poem about love on that very subject. Oh, God. Distance makes the heart grow, grow fonder. fonder. Yes. Mm -hmm. That would be such a force. Can you think of a force that increases with distance? I'm really trying to think here. Yeah. Something that gets greater. Yes, but farther. it is so obvious that you're not thinking about it. That's how obvious it is. Oh, let you me ready? See. Go I, ahead. I'll tell you. A rubber band. Yeah, that makes sense. Or a spring. So I take this spring and I stretch it. Okay. That takes energy, but the more I stretch it, the more it pulls. The more it pulled back on yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. Okay, you didn't like leaving the equilibrium spot, so now I press on the spring. It, it pushes back still. The opposite direction. No matter what you do, it pushes back. It tries to get back to home base. This is a different kind of force. Yeah. And it has a different equation. Force is minus k x. L leave out the k. K is just a constant. X is like your displacement from the equal So that's the push or the pull. And it's minus because it's opposite, opposite what you're trying, trying to, do. to do. Whatever you're trying to do, it's the opposite. Man. I'm trying to push this way. No, you don't. Look at that. Bring that sucker back in to where you were. Now watch. If you start at zero and you try to push this way, it's pulling you back. Right. Okay? Now, if you go to negative numbers, the minus to the X. Minus, minus. Gets plus. plus back to the other direction. Boom. Boom. Love it. Love it. Boom. Love it. Awesome. That's the intersection of the math and the physics. That's math in real world. Correct. I love it. So now watch. Go ahead. Let's go back to gravity now. Mm -hmm. I can toss something, and it can, it'll can it go up, slow down, and turn back around. I have an equation that will describe that. Mm -hmm. What happens if I displace the spring and let go? It'll just, it'll do this. Right. Because it'll get to the midpoint, it'll overshoot. And go further. further. And now then I'm plus, it, and then it goes back. And it goes back. But then I'll go back. Welcome to the harmonic oscillator. Up, oh, get out. This is harmonic motion. When is the spring moving its fastest? Should be when you first let it go, right? No. Oh no, at the middle. At the middle. That's at right. At the middle. Yes, because you pulled it, I and pulled now it's it. static. And but now it's accelerating. Now the force is accelerating, accelerating. It by this it new gets, formula. And then it gets to the middle, okay. but it's no longer. Now it's pushing. It overshoots. Mm. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Okay. I love it. Now, there's the force, but then I want to know what it's doing over time. Right. There's some, some equations are going to have T in it, time. Okay? So, to solve the... Harmonic oscillator, you need trigonometry. Oh, it's been nice. <laughs> Is that, that where you part that's ways? Where I, that, that's where I got to go, guys. <laughs> Trig, my worst subject. Okay, so the vertical axis is where you are. Then the sine curve will take you there on the upside and take you there on the, on downside. the downside. That actually makes sine curves a little okay. more easy to understand. Okay, you got right. that? Yeah. It's taking you up and down with it. Right. And in calculus. The first derivative of your position 
is your speed. Okay. Okay. Now the first derivative in calculus is just the slope of the line representing where you are. And if the sine curve is where you are, you're first up here and now you're down here as time goes on, up here and down here, what is the slope at the top of the curve, of a sine curve? Zero. Zero, thank you. Yeah, okay. Oh my God, I'm doing calculus. Yes, you are, yes you are. <laughs> so watch, so at the top of the curve, that's when the thing is displaced the most. Right. I said the slope, which is the first derivative in calculus, the slope is the speed by definition. So the speed at the top of the curve zero. is zero. And that's where it's at maximum displacement. Right. And in fact, it, it has to be zero. Of course. Because of course. a moment before it was going in this direction. Exactly. And, the next and now moment, it's got to come back. So, at some point, it's got to stop completely, hit zero, and then boom, now it's accelerating okay. in the opposite direction. So now direction. in this sine curve, mm -hmm. where is the slope the highest? So you have to ask, where is the slope the steepest? Because eventually the slope flattens out again at the bottom. All right, and becomes zero. It becomes zero. So where is it when it has maximum speed? It's in the middle. In the middle. In the middle. Which we had already established. Right. And I'm saying the sine curve, it's built into the features of the sine curve. That's harmonic motion. The harmonic motion is everywhere. Yes, it is. You know what it is? It's in a rocking chair. Right. Mm. When is Grandpa moving the slowest? Right, right at, at the, the edge. edge, okay? I'll tell you. <laughs> I remember when sine curves weren't even sine curves. Sine curves were just curves. They, they were just curves. <laughs> there ain't no, yeah, trig well, there ain't no trigonometry to tell you about no curves. <laughs> so, so a rocking chair is harmonic That's motion? That's harmonic motion. Um, what else? There's things. A slinky? Yeah, slinky would slinky, be a harmonic motion harmonic because motion. it's a spring, it's right? A spring. So you just watch sweep, it sweep, and you just sweep, watch sweep. it. Yeah, you just, just yeah, watch yeah, it yeah, oscillate. Exactly. Now, it'll finally, it'll eventually slow down and stop because there's friction, right. it, yeah. dissipation of it inside the inside material. The spr inside the spring itself. But you learn in, in physics class, you learn the perfect case, a massless spring with no friction and you and you it would go forever. Right. But nothing will really do that, but you get the equations and later you put in the correction for the friction and the dissipation and the like. Wow. This was physics, calculus, trigonometry. trigonometry. Yeah. All this. That's and, really and cool. harmonic motion. Oh, I got another one for you. That's so Ooh. great. Ooh. Go ahead. Ooh. Go ahead. A pendulum is harmonic That's motion. That's harmonic motion. You want to describe a pendulum? And where's the pendulum moving the slowest? At the very at top. The, at the Either edges. Either end. Either okay? end. Yeah. And gravity is the force, the restorative force in pull each it direction. Back down. And that's going to have a sine curve in it. In the solution to that equation, a pendulum takes the same amount of time to complete a swing, no matter how wide you swing it. And this seems very counterintuitive. Yeah, because it thinks as. You... That makes sense. Because the speed changes. Yes. So if the speed changes. Because what happens is the higher up I bring it, right. the, the, the more it falls right. before it gets to the bottom. Exactly. So it's the same amount of time. Exactly. It's just the covering same. more distance in that time. Because it's moving because faster. Because the speed's faster. Correct. Look at that. Now, do you know who first realized this? No, I do not. Galileo. Being bored in church in a hot summer day, the windows are open. The wind was blowing and the chandelier was swaying. Hmm. And he noticed that no matter how fast the wind blew and how much it swung, it took the same, same amount, amount of, time. of time to go to and fro. And you know how he measured the time? No. With his pulse. See, look at that. Look, put your finger right there and you got bo, bo, bo. Now you look at the swing. Bo, and, bo, and it was the bo, same each time. And it's the same each time. So he didn't invent the pendulum clock, but he discovered the fact that the pendulum. pendulum will, by the way, if the pendulum, if you pull the pendulum too far out, then there are nonlinear effects that will influence it. So we're talking about the linear mode of a pendulum is within a range, okay? okay? Yeah. You should bring it up here. That's yeah, now that's going to work. Then it's, yeah, then yeah, it's yeah, 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 right. yeah. You can figure that. You can calculate that. Anyhow, Galileo didn't invent a pendulum clock, but mm -hmm. he discovered the fact that a pendulum, no matter how wide its arc, will keep the same time. So if you're going to make a reliable clock right. with something that doesn't vary, put a pendulum in it. Christian Huygens, a Dutch polymath from the... 17th century, he figured out that the angle doesn't really matter. It'll keep the same time. Keeps the same time. Put the pendulum inside the clock, thus is born the pendulum clock. Look at and that. He has a, this major work called Horologium Oscillatorium. Okay. Horology is the study of time and timekeeping and oscillations, right? So therein is the, the fundamentals of the pendulum clock. It was the most visible expression of the, a pendulum. Did he also put the cuckoo bird in the clock? Those are the Swiss, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. This is harmonic motion. 
Anytime you see something swaying back and forth, there's a restoring force that gets greater the farther the thing goes away. That's Dope. It's totally dope. That is amazing. I love it. And this is basic physics. It's not your first week of physics. It's physics in real life. It's great. All right, we're done here, Chuck. That was great. That's been another Star Talk explainer on harmonic motion, and it didn't put Chuck to sleep, and I'm delighted by that. Until next time, keep looking up.